Hey guys, we found a nice stretch of trail here with a little river in the background. Just a perfect spot to check out the new Trek Alant Plus 7. This actually replaces the old Dual Sport, which was a really cool bike to me because, you know, Dual Sport, the idea is you could take it on roads, you could take it on gravel paths like this because it has a nice suspension. Now, this is only a 50 millimeter travel suspension, SR Suntour, not air. It is a tapered uh, head tube though, so you could potentially upgrade someday. I like that they took all the graphics and stuff off of this. It's even got a black anodized stanchions here. Again, not a ton of travel, but it's nice because it's got progressive lockout right there. We've got preload, so you can preload those springs if you're someone who weighs a bit more and you don't want that, uh, kind of like use up your travel just because of your body weight, you preload the spring. And then down here, We've even got rebound adjust. I am not used to seeing that on a coil spring suspension. So these are, these are weigh a little bit more, but they're very reliable over time. And the bike itself weighs about 47 and a half pounds. We are looking at the high step. It comes in three frame sizes. We're looking at large, which is just about right for me. I'm roughly five nine, a five foot nine inches, weigh about 135 pounds. So I'm not the heaviest guy. And this thing just zips because it does have a really powerful motor. We'll get to that in a minute. They also have a step through version and it's got this same down tube and, and it has a secondary kind of a top tube just to create a really strong rigid feel and we're going to look at that bike a little bit later too um, both of them come in this gloss like navy blue with these kind of a silvery accent uh, trek has this whole like safety uh, emphasis on a lot of their bikes and so i like that they've got these little highlights i like that they've got these reflective sidewalls on the tires they've got this awesome 180 lumen headlight right here from herman's with a nice cutout and you can actually see that slanted kind of a mirror in there so it's designed to shine down at the trail and not up into the eyes of oncoming vehicles or or other cyclists then we've got this axa blue line e rear light with two leds nice big reflective surface it's fitted onto this really streamlined, kind of a minimalist rack. And it, at first you're like, well, how does it attach to the frame? We don't have bosses here on the seat stays. Well, it's actually a metal piece that's under this fender. Plastic fenders, roughly 65 millimeters wide, nice black hardware, really ties in beautifully. And you can see how they mount separately from the frame. The, the, the rack frame itself actually has like a little bungee loop at the bottom, standard gauge tubing. And again, it rated up to 25 kilograms, 55 pounds. So it's a very capable rack. Maybe not quite as much room on top for a trunk bag, but perfect for panniers on the side. So I, I just love to see that. And maybe another trade-off to mention though, is that because the light is not protected by the tubing on this rack, it's a little bit more vulnerable if it gets bumped into from the sides or back. These bikes are uh, sold exclusively through shops and there's a huge network of Trek dealers out there. So you might not have to worry so much about the extra tune up and messing around with it. You can go in, you can get fitted, make sure you get the right frame size. They'll set it up perfectly for you versus some of the other e-bikes I've reviewed where they ship it to you and you need to worry about stuff like this because the bike kind of ends up upright or flipped over. Uh, during the shipping process, these lights can get damaged. So it's a little less of a concern once you've actually got the bike, but I did want to call that out. And you can see that it's wired through the fender. So really, really nice bike. This is completely purpose-built, internally routed cables. It really ties in nicely with that power tube battery. And you'll see that there are three bosses right here. And then a another little kind of a grommet right here and down here. And that's because they've got this second Bosch battery option where you can double your range so you can get a power pack 500 that would be externally mounted to the frame and then just really take this thing maybe like bike packing or touring and that would be really cool now unfortunately the Alant plus 7 low step is not compatible with the optional Bosch range boost second battery there's nowhere to mount it uh, in fact it only has one bottle cage mount which is pretty well positioned fairly high up on that top tube but you're missing out on the second bottle cage mount you're missing out on range boost with uh, with the low step which is you know for people who want to go trekking or touring and they want that lower standover height that's a miss um, however the minimum saddle height on both of these frames is fairly similar meaning the actual height you have to get up to to sit on that seat is going to be similar and you know with the rear rack it's fairly narrow so i don't see people putting trunk bags on top it's probably better set up for panniers on the side and that means you'll have more room to swing your leg around and over that rack um, just keep this in mind or if you're in the united states consider the 
Alant Plus 7S, which is a speed pedelec, and it comes with the staggered frame, which is compatible with the Bosch range boost. For me, again, this whole like dual sport idea with these slightly larger tires, you can see from the front, this is like a go anywhere tread. It's not super thick and knobby, but it's definitely more grippy than an all road tire. These are 27.5 by 2.5 inch. So again, a little bit wider and a little bit taller and that creates a lower attack angle. So you can just ride over the bumps and stuff. You won't be hitting the, the cracks as much. You'll just span right over them. Uh, really nice, like a little bit more air volume, slightly wider Alex rims, double walled. We got these nice black spokes, 14 gauge black uh, hub right there in the middle. And then check this out, 15 millimeter through axle up front. That's not the type of thing you see on most like city bikes and stuff. They just have like the nine millimeter quick release skewer. So 15 millimeters, this fork, again, it's kind of a highlight for me. I like that if you are going the distance, maybe you've got the second battery pack right here. They got you covered in terms of water and stuff. Bottle cage bosses, maybe a second mount right here. This could be used for like a folding lock if you didn't want to have your bottle like sloshing out and dripping down on your battery. But this Bosch stuff is all rated like highly water resistant. This is high quality stuff. They have a two year comprehensive warranty. They got all these dealers and stuff. So Trek is, is definitely a leader. I feel like they've been doing a really good job with their e-bikes. And I just continue to see that. And they've got a whole lineup of these. So right now I'm in Canada, I'm looking at the Alant Plus 7. In the US, they have the Alant Plus 7S, which I think is a speed pedelec. So they just don't have that in Canada. So this is a class one, 20 mile per hour, 32 kilometer per hour, just regular electric bike that can, can ride on like all kinds of trails. You're not gonna be as restricted as if this was like a speed pedelec, which would otherwise be great for commuting or people who just want that faster, sportier feel. And again, just very durable. So check this out. We got a 42, uh, a 40 tooth chain ring steel, narrow wide. So that chain isn't going to jump off with an aluminum alloy guard on the outside. These okay plastic Bontrager like pedals with lots of reflectors. Look at that. Again, that's Trek's like safety piece. And then a nice clear sticker slap guard. So you won't mess up that a chain stay. And then look at this aluminum alloy versus steel, which could rust. This is like a derailleur guard. Okay. And we do have a decent Shimano Alivio. This is several steps up in the Shimano, uh, kind of like the group set ranking with a long cage derailleur. Okay. So this is got a little bit of gunk in there right now. This is a nicer derailleur. It's going to be a little bit uh, like tighter. It doesn't have like a clutch or anything built in here, but this should be pretty reliable. Little barrel adjuster. So over time as these cable housing seat in, you can just turn this to the left and it's going to sort of lengthen the, uh, the housing and, and then essentially make up for any like slack that's been given up over time. So that's just something you can do on your own without going to the shop. You just, you know, twist it to the left. It gets a little bit longer. And that's if you hear this going like tick, 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 and it's not aligning perfectly uh, with the cassette. And this is a cassette back here, 11 to 36, nine speed. So that is great. A lot of times I'm seeing like 11 to 32, 11 to 34, 11 to 36 is solid. And nine speeds means that you can find the perfect cadence, uh, especially on, the standard class one model right here, but also I think for the speed pedelec, it's just gonna give you more uh, more choices. So you're gonna be able to pedal comfortably and the bike is very comfortable. These are rubber Bontrager grips. This is a Trek brand, right? So that's why you'll see this all over the bike. Uh, ergonomic locking. They do have these little removable endpoints right here. So you potentially add mirrors and stuff. We've got the little window right here, which to me it's, you can sometimes it's hard to read especially with this bright like silver bell right there. But that is nice for people who are maybe new to, to cycling and having something like this versus an internally geared hub, which is going to be heavier, slower. This is a pretty sporty, nice setup. Um, I'm really impressed with that. I like it. And I just love this, this guard. To me, it's like the little things that can really make a difference. Uh, people tend to ride their e-bikes more frequently and go for longer rides because you do have that assist happening. Now we've got a kickstand back here. It's not adjustable or anything, but it's probably not gonna rattle as much or come loose. 18 millimeter uh, mounting point right there. And then 180 millimeter hydraulic disc brakes from Shimano. Definitely nice to have those, especially if you load this rear rack up. Uh, this bike, again, this whole like touring, trekking, uh, sort of a uh, experience. It's, it's just nice to have hardware that's not gonna fail on you on those longer rides. Uh, 31.6 millimeter seat post. So that's a little bit 
wider. And that means that you could potentially put like a dropper post if you wanted to, or for me, I would get a suspension seat post. So you'd have suspension up front, suspension right here, and you'd have that nice comfortable feel, but you'd also have the rack. You'd have a bike that, I think this is like $35.99. So it's not the most affordable bike, but you've got the good support and it's high quality components and stuff. So that's, you know, Trek stuff does cost a little bit more because it's like a higher quality brand. Um, I think this is about the same price as the old dual sport. So they've just tried to keep, keep things steady that way. And then maybe on this side, let's see here. Oh, I do. I just want to highlight the light again. See how it's mounted to the upper portion, like the crown of the suspension fork versus the arch right here. The arch goes up and down, whereas this is going to stay fixed. So this is sprung versus unsprung. And that's good in terms of weight distribution, but also because the, the light's not going to be rattling around and jiggling loose. So a uh, good good choice there at points where you steer you used to kind of have actually i think it's still compatible with some of the trek light accessories and stuff but you'll see there's cables up here that can get kind of blocked so i think this is a pretty good position it's not quite as you know you want to be like high up and really visible which is why uh, a lot of times I'll have my white glasses, but these are my clear ones since it's a little bit overcast today. And I've got this Abus helmet here with like a little light thing kind of built in. And Abus gave this to me. So it's, you know, it's kind of a fun helmet, but safety is a, it's a big thing, especially if you're riding a little bit faster and on a, a darker colored bike. So a little bit of a, you know, it's like, I kind of liked it up here, but I can see why they moved it down here. It's going to be out of the way. And then you could potentially upgrade and get like, there's, there's a Bosch phone mount. Um, so you could have your phone for GPS and you could be charging that off of these battery packs down here. Lots of possibilities, lots of possibilities. And each bike is set up depending on this frame size with like a longer stem. I think this one's 90 millimeters, but it might be 70 or hundred, depending on what frame size you get. You've got three 10 millimeter spacers here. I think these might be 100 and 70 millimeter crank arms, but you get 175 if you go up to like the extra large frame. Uh, just cool, really dialed in, very comfortable saddle. Like the bike is feeling good to me. I think the biggest trade-offs with Trek is that you, you just are paying a little bit more, right? And it doesn't have a throttle. This is class one. So there's some advantages to that, but there are some trade-offs depending on your ride style. And then one of the things that's really a highlight for them this year is going to the new fourth generation Bosch Performance Line CX motor. So this is like 6.39 pounds, really light compared to the old 8.8 .8 pound Bosch Performance Line CX motor. Still gives you 75 Newton meters of torque. It still gives you, I think it's like 340% feedback. Very powerful, just a lot more compact, a lot smaller. And it's, it's really smooth, it's really dynamic. They've got it set up here instead of like the EMTB mode, like you'll see on some of the mountain bikes and stuff, they've just got the Eco Tour Sport and Turbo. And so they step up progressively. It's, it works really well, but you do hear a little bit more noise, kind of like a ring sound with, with the Bosch motor, especially the high power motor. And it's not gonna be as efficient, so you might go through the battery faster. And this is the PowerTube 500 versus the 625. And so that's another trade-off, right? At least they throw in the four amp charger. This is the, the bigger, faster charger. Um, you know, weighs like a pound and a half gets the job done. Uh, and then they, they used Abus for the keys right here. So this is this is nice. It's got a like, key to like key card. So maybe you get that folding lock right here and then you use this same key to, to use your lock and remove the battery. But before I do that, I wanna come back to the drivetrain. Remember I was talking about narrow wide chain ring and how nice this cassette is. With all that power up to 75 Newton meters of torque on a mid drive, good weight distribution, really dynamic. It's gonna it's going to give you a lot of leverage like depending on what gear you're in you're going to be able to empower yourself and the motor but it's also just very strong so one of the things bosch does really well is they have shift detection and the motor controller is listening it's like over a thousand times per second and it's measuring like your pedal strokes and like any spikes in pressure that might come from shifting okay and then it it backs off a little bit. So it's called shift detection, which I think is, is a really cool system. It's not perfect. You can still kind of like kunk, kunk, kunk. You can still bang it if you really just shift quickly and aren't, aren't real thoughtful about it. But it's just, it's just something extra that Bosch does um, that's really unique. And it's really cool. I'm going to try to show that later. But I'm reminding myself that back up at the triggers, this is a two-way high lever. See how you can push it or pull it? I like that. And then there's a three-step low. So you can one, two, three. You can dump the gears. Again, be careful. Yeah, you have shift detection, but you don't want to overdo it. Okay, so back to what makes this bike a little bit more special than maybe some of the other like hardtail light trail bikes, or this is almost like, again, commuter, 
uh, trekking bike, it's so many possibilities. Trek has, has used this like rib design, that's what they call it. Um, it's this battery like holster thing with a handle on top and it's really nice but in order to open the the battery you have to come from the opposite side now they purposely made the battery come off this side because with trail bikes and stuff like mountain bikes you actually lay it on its side they don't have kickstands you want everything to come off on the drivetrain side this is the, the sensitive part of the bike so on the one hand it's really good it's like oh good it comes off this way on the other hand you still have to reach around and then find that that key slot right here open it Right, and it, there's that first step that just kind of comes off, and then you have to push down on this black, and then pull it off like this, right? So, there's there are a couple steps. This battery weighs like 6.4 pounds, very close to what the motor weighs. Except when you add this rib casing thing with the handle, now it's 7.7 .7 pounds. So it's significantly heavier just so you can carry it around like this and have the metal. Now, it's not a super fair comparison because presumably you'd have like a metal frame anyway. And so I, I don't know how much of this you'd have on the bike with or without the battery, but I think the power pack, like the plastic ones, those only weigh like 5.7 pounds. So it's significantly lighter and I'm still kind of mixed on the whole integrated battery design. I like how it looks, but it's, it is a trade-off in weight. And you can see the cables and stuff in here. There is the, uh, the sort of the electronics interface and there's the the back sides of those screws and stuff it's it's a nice setup they've done a good job it's just a little bit of a trade-off and there's still i don't know something to be there's there's room for improvement so i put this here you think like oh just push it right in but that's the other complaint i have you you can't you actually have to come back here twist the key and then push it in and get it to click right so that that's like uh, it all seems unnecessarily complex. There are other battery systems that just like you push it and it's like clink and it, it locks on. Maybe this one's more secure or something, but it does take almost like two hands or a knee and one hand. Uh, the other thing is the charging port on this is right here. So it's again on the non-drive side, which could be laying down or whatever, and it's low. So you have to come down here and it, you know it's right there, right by the crank arm too. So if you were charging and someone bumped this, it could it could bump into that and like snag the cable and for me that's a bit of a that's a bit of a trade-off so yeah keep that in mind these are areas where maybe in the future the charging port could be up higher and, and trek could like refine this rib design a little bit to be lighter or something like that uh you know all things considered it's decent you got the better charger and stuff show the, the wires and stuff here by the motor it's a really nice casing and there's an aluminum alloy bash guard out front um, and, and then again, the chain ring guard, it's, it's gonna keep the teeth and everything intact. It doesn't cycle backwards. So sometimes I like to lube my chain and just cycle and it doesn't do that. This just kind of freewheels backwards. Apparently there's, there's no like extra resistance or anything. There's, there's no conversion gears like the older Bosch motors. So it's a little bit more efficient that way. It's just one for one uh, coming out of it. And it's again, just well protected and stuff. But I, apparently the Q factor is also like 175, which is a little bit larger than some of the other motors out there so you know i i it's it's a minor thing i'm really scrutinizing this i feel like bosch is reliable and they've got some of the best software and sensors but there are some trade-offs so i turned the display on a minute ago and you can see here you know we've got our speed up top uh, we've got our battery infographic which is just like five dots so 20 percent steps it'd be nice if that was 10 or maybe an actual percentage readout just a little bit more precise um, the lights are always on, and I think normally you'd have to hold the plus button to turn them on or off, but that might be a safety thing, again, that Trek requested. Now you can see from the side and from the front, those 180 lumens really doing their, whoa, there we go. And then in the back, the two LED setup, I, I like that. Uh, just might as well, and, and again, visible from the side, really nice. For far enough back, that probably not gonna block your panniers and stuff. And a lot of times, some of the e-bikes Recently, they've had seat-mounted uh, lights, but then it's wired in through the seat post. It messes up if you want to have a seat post suspension, or it's down here. It can get blocked. So I think this is the right place to have it. It looks great. Back up to the display here. If we press plus, we'd go from, you know, we were in off. There was no pedal assist. Now we're in eco, and then it switches back to say, okay, here's your total distance ridden. And if we press up again, tour, wait for a second, it goes back to our our other readout. Now, I think we can cycle the readouts by holding minus. So we go from total to range. Range is so cool. As you change assist levels, it dynamically updates. So see 49, 
turbo, that's the highest level assist, 43. So you can see the range, the estimated range dropping. It calculates that based on like the last mile of riding you've actually done. So it's pretty dynamic. It's not just like formulaic. It's back to those sensors that Bosch does so well. Okay, and if I hold minus again, we got turbo. And this, oh, that's what this is. This is just showing, it just keeps the level of assist up. It doesn't switch to anything. So one more time trip distance there we go so now we've gone all the way around so there's like trip total range and then uh, current level of assist i think if you want to change from kilometers to miles you just yeah hold minus tap the power button and they do have walk mode enabled as well so if we tap that for a second it says walk hold plus we hold it for a second there we go ghost rider this is a uh, pretty nice some of the original trek bikes didn't enable walk mode because they were so sensitive about throttles and stuff and i think they finally like they're like, okay, this is useful for people. If you got a flat tire or you're walking through a park and you've got your almost 50 pound bike and you just, you need a little help climbing that hill, they have enabled walk mode. So that's really good. I think I'm gonna just pack up the chargers and, and go for a ride and let you guys hear this thing in action. So a couple times recently, people have requested just pedal without the motor on, maybe so you can hear it. And also just, I can give you some feedback about how hard it is, how difficult it is. These are, you know, larger diameter, wheels so it takes a little bit more energy to get them up to speed although they're lightweight alex rams and these tires are pretty light um, but then you get good momentum and that smooth ride feel that i was talking about so i'm in the lowest gear here i'm just going to pedal along all i hear are little pebbles and things kind of coming up uh, from those tires and then you know clicking on the plastic fenders so that's it's very quiet there isn't any clicking when you coast or anything really lets you enjoy the the nature so now i'm gonna i'm gonna shift up to a couple gears okay pretty comfortable here you might want to do this just to have the lights maybe you're running low on battery or you want a little extra exercise now i can change and do some assist so take it up to eco It goes pretty satisfying. Like sometimes you just go all the way up to turbo and, and it's it's easy to sort of skip right over. This is gonna get you excellent range. It's quiet and it definitely helps. Like it's very noticeable when you go from no assist. Now I'll take it up, tour. I like tour and sport the most personally. Hey guys. Okay, I just took it like all the way up to turbo. Uh, for fun to get that nice zippy sound. Let's do it. Let's click all the way up. Very stable with those wider 2.25 inch tires. And we're right at the edge of that 20 mile per hour top speed. And that's where the motor just backs off a little bit. And you can go faster than that. It's not going to slow you down or anything, but you have to work for it and i would probably want to raise the saddle and be kind of careful we do have some pedestrians on this trail okay guys from here you can see that 40 tooth narrow wide steel chain ring with the alloy guide uh, the crank arms and then back here the nine speed 11 to 36 tooth cassette with the levio derailleur nice setup um, oh and by the way in the rear it uses like a nine millimeter skewer but there's no quick release front or rear so keep that in mind. You can always swap the hardware out or maybe switch it to security hardware. And maybe that has to do with like the touring potential of this bike. But um, yeah, that's uh, that's the setup. It's pretty decent. I'm going to pedal along. Um, I'm going to try to hit that max pedal cadence, which is, they say, above 120 RPM. 120 is where Bosch has always been with their older generation uh, performance line motors, which is great because that means you can pedal very quickly and the motor isn't going to like not be able to keep up. Uh, and that's important if like, let's say you're going towards a hill and you downshift cause you're getting ready to climb. Well, if you downshift and the motor can't keep up, well then you're struggling on your own. So 120 plus is really nice. I'm gonna try to demonstrate that. I'm in the highest level of assist turbo. Okay, 
Okay, so we just went beyond 20. This time I'm gonna keep the speed lower, but I'm gonna raise the cadence a lot. Sweet. Got up to 17 miles per hour there in uh, gear number three. So that was sweet, you know, and I think I did max out the cadence probably at or around 120. Um, so as described, works pretty well. Maybe I'll just do, maybe like tour mode. That's the second level of assist, which is sort of my favorite and still a little bit more efficient to get good range. stuff all in all it you know it's the Bosch Gen 4 motor which I really like it's a bike that's fairly comfortable efficient good price point considering all of the accessories and stuff and yeah it just it feels good I'm gonna ride a little bit more here very responsive Right, you can just see that, that chain ring like start and stop pretty close to when I actually pedal and stop pedaling. And it's measuring three things. It's measuring real wheel speed, pedal cadence, and pedal torque. So it's a very fluid dynamic feel. Like even though I'm in turbo, if I just pedal lightly, see it's, it's not like overpowering me. So it's, it's kind of, um, it scales, right? Uh, it's relative to how much energy you're actually putting in. Sweet, and those big hydraulic disc brakes are doing a wonderful job here. Even with just one hand while I'm pedaling, they feel very responsive. But I wanna point out, check this out here. Look at those lowers on that suspension fork. They mounted that front fender with with like hardware and not these plastic cuffs so they're not going to like slide around and you know scuff on the tires and make that buzzing noise or anything so we're borrowing these bikes from trek coquitlam and it's uh, just such a nice place to to ride around i went back to the shop and i got the uh this is a bontrager pannier looks like it's kind of water resistant it's got some reflective like a little bottle pocket and stuff i wanted to show how this interfaced with the bike so you can see you just put these clips right here and then those two bars keep it from sliding forward and back and then there's a little velcro tab right here that you can wrap around these two um, support arms for the rack so anyway this is what the step through version looks like and this is that second top tube well i guess it's the only top tube but this is the main tube and then instead of going across like diamond step through like this and really rigid really solid feel to this bike you're not getting like frame flex or speed wobble anything like that so it's just a lot more approachable much lower standover height still a fairly high minimum saddle position you can see they've raised that that tube and these actually have really long like 400 millimeter uh, seat post again depending on size and stuff and i think that's that's a i guess that's nice because then you can fit a wide range of people on the bike so this this one they say like small medium large and then the high step they say medium large like extra large uh it's a pretty pretty nice bike same color which i feel is you know it's like gender neutral so this is just the one for people who might have that hip and knee sensitivity and you want something that's a little bit easier to stand over I, I feel like I glossed over the, the brakes earlier, and I just want to emphasize again, having 280 millimeter rotors, like that gives you a mechanical advantage, especially because these are like 650B, 27.5 inch wheel size versus like 26. Um, and, and that allows you to get almost like a 28 inch feel when you have these slightly higher volume 2.25 inch tires and uh, you know again these are schwabi which is a, a great brand kind of e-bike rated all around rc with performance just another kind of a quality name brand component which is part of why the bikes uh, are priced a little bit more 
So anyway, hope that answers all your questions, guys. I have gone over these thoroughly. I've measured like all the different like heights and width and weight and everything. And I've got a cool comparison tool so you can compare this to some of the other bikes that Trek has this year uh, back at the website, electricbikereview.com, along with the forums and stuff. I love to hear what you think. I'm gonna be covering more of these this year. Uh, have fun out there, ride safe. We'll see you next time.